Recently I wanted to know what default font Godot uses in controls like labels, because why not? I used my whole repertoire of IT skills to find an answer to this question of immeasurable impact. And yes, I also checked the documentation before. The most eminent experts of the whole planet Earth conspired to furiously answer what I didn't ask for. The deep dark hole of depression became even deeper and almost dug out in China or Australia or whatever. I stumbled across my own genius and tried what just about everyone with an IQ over 9000 would do. And as totally expected, I even failed in failing to gain access to the default control font. Having a rough idea of where I could gain more information about the default font, I checked the theme related source code, but the default font was never set there. I said hello to my friend again. Then I decided to learn how to compile Godot from an IDE and from the comfort of the IDE I could search a bit more what I was looking for. Message incoming from my survivorship, yes. Oh, I could have just taken a look at the subdirectory which also happens to be called default theme. Well, I didn't. Looking into the default theme, I found that at some point the static variable default font was set and that the font data comes from an included file. That included file just contains the font data and doesn't give any more hints about what font was used. Also, the font file doesn't seem to have had relevant changes over at least six years. Check out these two locations if you want to know where the default font was set. That concludes this little adventure for searching what default font is used in controls with some understanding gained during the journey. Now let's learn about how to compile Godot from an IDE and be able to look at Godot's source code and make changes to it. Following the first link, let's download the Godot source code. The second link shows two more important links. Following the link for Windows, we see that we need to download the MinGW compiler and Python. We need the LLVM version of MinGW to avoid wasting 20 minutes on link time, so just in advance avoid using the MinGW that comes with code blocks later on. We also need a Python installer, here I selected the version I used. We now have these three files, for Python we just run the installer and make sure that the so-called path environment variable is set. For the good old source code, we unpack it with whatever unpacking tool we use and rename the directory, so that the source files are immediately in the subdirectory. Then we unpack the LLVM MinGW compiler. Inside the unpacked compiler, we find another subdirectory called bin. We go inside the directory and copy its full path from the address bar. Which should look similar to this, we have to note that down. We open the start menu. To edit the environment variables, of which we edit the path variable. And to that we append the path to the bin directory of the LLVM MinGW compiler we just noted down. Now to install scons, we need to open a command line interpreter in our working directory holding shift key and right click. And just type pip install scons. The other documentation page just mentions ways of configuring where for our purposes the parameters use LLVM equals yes and the usage of multiple cores with J are enough. We need to successfully compile Godot one time before we import it to our IDE because more files will be created during the first build. Back in our command line interpreter we change the directory to the Godot source code and run scans with the use LLVM equals yes parameter and optionally a parameter to use multiple cores. It should look similar to this. Now back to the documentation for the IDE, we need to download code blocks. While we don't need the MinGW compiler of code blocks since we downloaded an LLVM MinGW compiler, we just follow the recommendation here. After downloading, we install code blocks. We run code blocks and create a new project. Select empty project template and configure it. The title should be the same as the directory name of the Godot source code and the project directory should be the directory where that source directory is in. We only create one build target because compilation is managed outside of code blocks by scans. In project properties, we set a custom make file. And in build options, we set the scans command to build and the scans command to clean the project. We then build the project. 
After that, we added the build targets in the properties menu. Select the executable file we just built, which is in the bin subdirectory of the Godot source directory, and disable the automatic generation of the file name prefix and extension. Before we actually run the project, we can tell our build of Godot to save settings locally by creating a file named as seen in the screenshots. We then run the project. To actually edit files, we need to add them to our project recursively and set our source directory. Many files will be selected already, but we can additionally include INC files. Be careful not to deselect the pre-selected files though. One reason to add files after the project is built successfully one time is because the build system creates new source files, which we also want to have included. At last, it is recommended to change the editor settings regarding the tabulator key. And if everything worked out, you can now change the good of source code and gain a deeper understanding of what is working behind the scenes. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something, like if you did and subscribe if you for the... Bye.